Wow, listeners, Mars Badminton 2024 has been the biggest roller coaster of emotion, um, and it all came in the show jumping day. I felt like Cross Country Day was remarkably calm, Rosie, uh, despite the fact that it did cause, you know, plenty of problems and movement on the leaderboard. That show jumping has been anything but calm. They were saving all the chaos for the final day because you're right. We said in our uh, final pod diary that, oh, you know, cross country was influential, but it all seemed, you know, quite nice. And like you say, organized, calm. Show jumping, well, that was wild. Everything you expected to happen didn't happen. It was it was just a total, somebody threw the balls in the air and wait and see but it was exhilarating well let's talk about our winner caroline powell green acre special cover who d put up as a dark horse and and we were we were naughty not to have spoken about them more on the preview show and fair play to d for picking them up as a dark horse um because actually you know they they deserve to be well up there they, they didn't this wasn't a total surprise they have had brilliant five-star form they were excellent at maryland at the back end of last year the horse has come on so much actually caroline bought the mare here 12 months ago and she had a couple of problems cross country and a couple of rails down but caroline bought her here then very much with a view to improving her and building upon that experience in the future and that paid dividends here this year i spoke to caroline after her dressage actually and she scored 30 she was in seventh and she came out a little bit deflated and sort of said, you know, we've, we've got targets and I could have, would have preferred another couple of marks off. And, you know, she wasn't disappointed, but she was a, a little bit, I guess, underwhelmed with the first phase. And actually, you know, from there, she has just climbed and climbed and climbed. Um, cross country, the mare looked phenomenal. A uh, few time penalties, but actually looked very comfortable very confident she is just a total class act isn't she the mare looks superb on that final day jumped like a dream she was rated it as one of the best jumpers coming into this and she definitely proved that and actually she was one of the biggest climbers i think we've had as a winner after cross country because our previous bigger biggest climb was in fifth place after cross country and then go on to win caroline was in sixth after cross country and then went on to win i just think that that's I, going back to i think 1990 back, yeah and obviously we've had you know differences in penalty scores and things which can kind of influence that over the years but you know that is a huge result she was sixth going into the jumping and she climbed all the way to the top of that podium it was massive and I don't think she can really believe it's happened, to be honest. I think she was in as much shock she as would anyone. Have, she would have been watching, thinking, right, podium place, Paris yeah. place. You know, this is a big Paris conversation. And she would have thought, Paris place, done everything I needed to do this weekend. But to actually win, mm. Team New Zealand, try leaving her behind now. Because actually, <laughs> everybody else is going to be fighting for their place. And Caroline Powell says, right, my name's on that ticket. Thank you very much. Everyone, badminton. Uh, you can't deny that that is an incredible result. The mayor, as you say, was beautiful in the show jumping. She was the most uh, relaxed. She was easy. Um, she was, it was a comfortable watch. Do you know what I mean? Yes, you know, there'd yeah. been plenty of rounds where there'd been a few rubs, a few rattles, and the time was tight. She was comfortably inside the time. And she just looked absolutely class in, in all phases. She um, did, because that course was tough, that show jumping. D, reaction on Caroline Powell? Delighted for her. You know, that horse was last last year. That's... Isn't that kind of the story that we just have only found? Do you know who found it? It's going to go everywhere. I'm going to push this as the new angle. By the time you hear this, you'll have seen it. But you know who found it? Who? Only bloody Spike Milligan. <laughs> Echo ratings. Echo ratings Spike consultant vet. Spike yeah. Vet. Anyway, we shouldn't say that in a public forum, but look, I have to give him his due. Um, Spike, if you're listening, great find, great find. You well, put her up as your dark horse. We did. Yeah. Well, I just think, you know, yeah, yeah. There, was a lot of, there was a lot of fantastic horses here. When you try to be, when you, you can be very easily, I suppose, to, to sound smart after the fact. But that horse has a very, very good cross-country record. And only for, it wasn't quite a wrong turn, but they overjumped into water at Maryland, went a little bit too far, and that's what resulted in time penalties at Maryland. Other than that, it was a pretty flawless Maryland performance. They've come here, they've backed it up as a horse that the Kiwi program have really been looking forward to. That current that now guarantees um qualification and um for, for that Kiwi team. So they're there now at Paris in full strength and I think Caroline Powell will very likely be a very big member of that team after this result. But this was not 
Caroline's role within that was never going to be dependent on this. I think the angle, I think the, I think the emotional angle. I think, I think it was dependent on this. I think Caroline needed a big result this weekend to, to secure that spot. Maybe. I, 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 I would always bow down to your knowledge on that, Nicole. <laughs> but, but I suppose my, another way of looking at it, uh, for me, I think I, I, I do think the Maryland result was a yeah, you're was, right. was maybe you're right. a bit of a turning yeah. point for them. And with where the Kiwis are at the moment, I think there is a door open for for a um, for someone like for a Green Acres. And, and look, look, who cares about who cares about Maryland right now in this moment? Because it it, sh- it was the setup for today. But today they came in here as a top show jumper. Actually, Alex Bragg alongside them. It, it was on that list, um, that that top show jumper list. They came in as a top jumper. It was a. I was with Sam and David O'Connor watching it, and they both said to me, "This is a hard, hard track. This is a harder, bigger, more technical track than we've seen at badminton in a long time." There were a lot of short distances, and you know these are tired event horses. Um, Dee, have you got to go? I actually do have to go. I have to get on a plane. You've got to get on a plane, right? Listeners, we're going to well, say I'm goodbye gonna, to I'll Dee. In, I, uh, I'll do another. We'll, we'll be dissecting this for a long time, won't we? I think we will. I think we will. Safe travels. I'm just out for We're just doing just some live podcast job. admin listeners on yeah, the, uh, on the thing. Admin. Okay, we've done our live admin listeners. We actually pressed pause for just a second because nobody needed all the good advice. D, uh, GP and Rory have dashed off to the airport. Rosie and I are still here. Um, I would just pick up, actually, on the Team New Zealand side of things. Janelle Price, uh, you know, Grappinera in six, actually, that gives her a really, really solid shout for Paris because you can't help but kind of look at, at Tim and Janelle and sort of say, right, it's not a case of if they're going, it's what they're going on. And But actually, Grappinera has gone in there and delivered a very, very good solid three phases and Janelle has got you now options. And, and I think that's exciting for Team New Zealand who've had a brilliant weekend here. Um, Tim... Oh, should we talk about Tim? Oh, poor Vitaly? Tim. Poor Tim. I mean... It looked so good in the first half of the course. Well, the first... And then he had a rail, but it was yeah, okay. But he, it was okay. It was only one he could afford to. After thought, the rail, okay. though, it was nice to see it didn't unravel too quickly because sometimes it can unravel... For a few fences, at least. Y- yeah. Yes. Yeah. But they look like there might be hope. Yes. <laughs> and then Tim, I mean, he Bless is him. he is phenomenal. And it's very rare that you see Tim in any kind of lack of balance or anything like that, you know. Um, and it, the rest of the round just didn't go to plan. He he ended up, I think he still snuck just inside the top 10, was he? At eight. Uh, eight. So, you know, still a top 10 finish. The horse has got an incredible five-star record. Um, but uh, today wasn't their day. No, and it's the first time I've ever seen him, like you say, rarely has a lack of balance. But over that fence, I was like, oh my gosh, please sit up, stay on, Tim, I beg you, because, yeah. oh God, it was, it was eventful, but... Before we go away from Team New Zealand, let's hear from our winner from Caroline Powell. Rosie, you caught up with her after that incredible win. She's such an amazing mare because she's got such a scope and when her frisk goes, she goes and was you know, say woo and pop a breath, she, she slows down. <laughs> oh, you know, whole week, you know, with both horses being absolutely amazing, I've learnt so much, you know, and just to be here is wonderful at uh, ripe old age. Um, <laughs> and to have a mare like her, you know, it's just stunning. I'm so lucky. So lucky. Caroline, you were rated as one of the best show jumpers coming into the field. Has she always been such a good show jumper? Um, yeah, yeah, I think she probably is. Um, I, I don't really sort of take much notice of that sort of stuff because your, your present forms and your present forms in it. Um, but yeah, no, she goes, she jumps quite a bit. She, we do some of the um, agriculture shows and stuff, and she's quite fun because um, they sort of look at her and go, "God, you're not going to make it around here." And she goes and cleans up. So you know, it's quite. It's, it's, she's she's a really fun horse to, to ride. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Just some result, absolutely phenomenal. Fourteen years after her last five star. Um, right, second place, Lucy Latter. She has been brilliant all week. And actually, you know, a couple of rails down, still good enough to climb her a place on the leaderboard. Incredible. I think she said fence three was her fault and she was kind of kicking herself about it. But if you told her, you know, when she was coming into this, it's your first five star and you're going to be on the podium. Like, it is absolutely wild what she has done. And I believe it is the first Irish female podium since uh, 1983 and that was Jessica Harrington yeah Jessie Harrington and I did actually just double check there was no there was no relation there because um I know obviously comes from an equestrian dynasty Lucy uh but actually 
Izib's dad used to train Jesse in the jumping. So there is a link, just in case anybody was worried there wasn't a link, there is a link. Um, look, absolutely extraordinary. She has been such a cool customer all week. And actually, this is her reaction to a podium finish at her first badminton. I had a really good round. He was really jumping for me, considering that was his first time, 11 minutes 19, and how big the fence three yesterday. I total rider error into fence three, so I'm really kicking myself about that. Um, I set up when I, I, sh I should not have, but um, that's for me to, to learn from my mistake, and I won't do that the next time. But yeah, he jumped really well. I'm really pleased with him. Um, and yeah, I think I'd have, I think I've, I've bitten your hand off if you told me this would have happened at the start of the week. So overall, delighted. The whole family have just absolutely loved it this week. And we spoke about her mum, Yvonne, yesterday. And I was chatting to her down at the mix zone and actually had to say a few words for the show as well. What a fairy tale for Lucy Latter and Yvonne Latter, who was the topic of much discussion on yesterday's podcast diary because we were reliving the infamous uh, Grand, Nas uh, Grand National. The excitement's too much for me, listeners. National and the moment from Bishop Burton Europeans. But, if I'm, your daughter has just been second at her first badminton. I, I mean, I can't believe it. I really can't believe it. I mean, she's just the coolest cookie I've ever come across. Nothing phases her. She had a plan in her head. She has a fantastic team around her between Isop. Caroline Moore has been phenomenal. She is one hell of a lady. And Mag, I mean, we're in the sport a long time. And my dad is at home. I've just rung him. My friend set up the video for him at home. And he's been very ill lately, but he's pulled through. And what's pulled him through is to see his granddaughter ride in badminton. And he's just said to me, thank God up in heaven for letting me live to see this day. And I had to put the phone down. I couldn't, I couldn't do I couldn't do it. I was welling up. So this to us is just a whole family thing. And I'm so, so proud of Paddy, as we call RCA patron saint, Lucy and his wonderful owners who nothing is ever a problem. We make a plan. We tell Leslie the plan and she says, go for it. Unbelievable support. So Lucy's extremely lucky. But yesterday was phenomenal. You had me in tears yes. just a second ago. Honestly, <laughs> listeners, I welled up here. I mean, yeah. just the most extraordinary week for her. She climbed up from 46th after dressage. But I, I think a word on her cross-country run yesterday because one second over the time, over that track, was something special. Well, I said to her in the lorry the other night, I said, what, are you happy with your plan? No, she'd walked it seven times. She said, I'm very happy with my plan. And I said, what is your plan? And she said, well, I haven't come to badminton just to jump around and have maybe 35 time penalties. I'm not here to do that. I think he's a really good cross-country horse. I know he's a really good cross-country horse and I know he's fit as a racehorse. So I'm going to give it a go. And if it doesn't come off, so be it. But I'm giving it a go. I'm not leaving it behind me. Fair play. Absolutely fair play. Uh, what was going through your mind watching her go yesterday? Huntsman's Close was one fence. I thought... You know, if you missed your line there, that was a tough one. Once I saw her going through that, I said, they're on it. And do you know what? I have such confidence in Paddy and Lucy because they, he's a phenomenal cross-country horse. Really cross And she was so in the zone. So in the zone. This the whole weekend. She's been so cool. Every time we've spoken to her, every time we've seen her, she's been eloquent, she's been calm, she's been collected. She did a brilliant cool sport with the Project Pony um, guys a little bit earlier on, was absolutely phenomenal with them. She really is an ambassador for the sport. She works full time as well. Huge credit to the entire team. Uh, show jumping, couple of rails down, it kind of felt like a bit of a disappointment. And then all of a sudden she's climbing back up the leaderboard again. Yeah, I mean, show jumping would probably be our weakest phase, but we've worked really hard. And I thought she did a super job in there. And it's not easy going into badminton, the silence that des descends when you're in there. And it's just kind of, oh my goodness. I thought they did a great job. Listen, two rails, what's that? Oh, she's second at badminton. Exactly. Amazing, yeah. amazing yeah. week for you all. How are you going to celebrate? Oh, we'll get home now first and we'll probably have a little party in Ireland. <laughs> I'm sure we will. I don't think there's such a thing as a little party in Ireland. A big party. A big party. <laughs> Yvonne, congratulations. Oh, thanks. Thank you so much. And everybody here at Badminton has been just wonderful to us all. I mean, it was, it's been a pleasure. I was here when my dad rode here in 71 and 72, but I was young and probably didn't appreciate what a huge event it is. And I spoke to somebody who I would really respect in the sport yesterday and he said... 
all the five stars, but badminton, for him, is the pinnacle. So here we are, second, I can't believe it. First Irish lady on a podium at badminton in over 40 years. Uh, Jessie Harrington was the last, 1983. Yvonne, enjoy the moment, well done. Thank you so much. The bit about her dad, oh my goodness me, I was welling up, Rosie. I mean, talk about an emotional moment. Um, it means a lot to the whole family that she's worked unbelievably hard and, and fair play to her. A massive climb up the leaderboard for Alex Bragg into third, podium finish for him with Quindiva. Ended up, I think this is Alex's first podium finish at five star off the top of my head. He's had a couple of fourths and fifths at, at five star before, um, but I'm pretty certain this is the first podium. And actually, you know, this mare is a very, very good jumper, but she's tricky and they manage her well. Yeah, I mean, I think she is called Diva at home for a reason because I think she is quite difficult, like you say, but. I have never seen Alex so elated when he came out that arena, bless him. He was on top of the world. And that's before he even knew he was third, just because of how well that mare jumped. And the jumping phases are where she excels. And I know that he'll be working on that first phase. But my gosh, she is a serious five-star campaigner if she can get that first phase down. He came out of the um, shoot yesterday. So when they finished the cross-country they can sort of come out of the main arena and they come down past the mix zone. And Alex's first words, he was absolutely thrilled with her cross-country ambit. He had a big smile on his face. First words were, I wish I'd gone a bit faster. Really? He obviously felt there was more in the tank and you kind of think he'll be, I'm sure, kind of thinking, oh, what could have been? But it's so exciting for him and actually, you know, you've got to leave the poles up on the final day, yeah. really. And, and, and as we've seen today, Caroline did. Um, Alex, absolutely brilliant climb from 10th up to a podium finish. So brilliant from him. Emily King, Valmy Biatz uh, ended up in fourth. They had a couple of rails down in the jumping, actually, and a time fault, which was uncharacteristic for them. Um, he's normally a very, very good jumper. And I think it, it just shows, actually, just how tense that main arena is. And it is a pressure cooker. When you're in reverse order, it gets tougher and tougher and tougher to jump. It really, really does. And I know that Emily also said that it's kind of a new experience for the pair of them because they've never, bless them, they've never got this far at badminton. She's never had to jump him after jumping round 11 and something minutes that it was yesterday. And the real undulations and tough track that is badminton. She said, although he's a good jumper, she really didn't know what to expect from him because she's never had him on that final day after doing a track like that. And I think it was just a big learning experience for them both. And I think they're going to come back better and stronger. And, well, it's very exciting to see them at further five stars this year. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Bubby Upton and Cola ended up in 10th. Bubby did a super clear round. I mean, 10th after that absolutely extraordinary comeback. Um, it felt like a really emotional weekend. And I think Bubby is a real competitor. But actually, the perspective of the fact that, you know, Eight months ago, she couldn't walk. It's wild. And, you know, we heard from both her and her mum on the, the preview show, on the last of the diary, sorry, earlier on today. Um, this is an unbelievably special weekend for them. And yes, they kind of wish it could have been, but it's just 11 penalties wasn't, wasn't their day yesterday, but actually everything they've been through. Absolutely extraordinary. Um, right, anybody else in the top 10? Uh, Tom Jackson, Capel Tolle Drift, another brilliant performance from them at Five Star. It's almost a bit of a what could have been weekend for Tom. Dressage wasn't quite where he normally has it. Uh, a few time penalties cross country and then one rail in the show jumping. And the horse is normally an exceptional show jumper, but he still ended up in fifth. Shout out to Tom Rowland, who oh, yeah. was seventh with Dreamliner, at 29th after dressage, moved up to 15th after cross country, moved up to seventh on the final leaderboard they will be absolutely thrilled with that horse and what a result for Tom oh it's absolutely fantastic and I I know that he's one that he says you normally produce horses up through the levels to get to five star and he was obviously given the ride as a more produced ready horse and I think that he's absolutely delighted and quite rightly so to be in that top 10 to, to be proving himself and and I believe it's Dreamliner's owner's birthday who you caught up with on one of our her birthday today. Her birthday today I, think. Oh, I feel really bad Claire it's your birthday and I haven't actually I've spoken to her a few times well today. I hope it's Claire's birthday because he did say it's 
Yeah, it is Claire's birthday because he says it's Dreamliner's owner's birthday and she bred him. So, yes, it's her birthday, I believe. There we go. Um, the, the, the Chamberlain family <laughs> bred this horse. And if you want to hear more about his story, go back to the first of the podcast diaries because uh, speak to Claire. And she, she very eloquently tells us about the horse's kind of family history and, and how he's become to, to come with Tom. And it's just a really lovely story. It's taken them 24 years to get back to Babington. They owned a horse here back in 2000, but they bred as well. And they've bred another. That is something it's pretty amazing. special. Um, finally, Rosie, the William Fox Pitt fairy tale wasn't to be. And I feel like we shouldn't let that final show jumping around. It, you know, it would have been the fairy tale, but sport doesn't always follow fairy tales. This is a man who has given us such brilliant, brilliant days at five-star level over so many years. He looked, he first rode at Babington 35 years ago, 1989, the horse called Steadfast. 14 five-star victories across 12 different horses to his name. He has been something else for this sport. He's a miracle worker, and I don't know if we're ever going to see anybody else like him because he is just phenomenal. It doesn't matter what he's sat on, he's going to get the best out of it. And, I mean, this weekend we saw top, top class performance from him. Okay, it unraveled in that final phase. But a 30.6, and what a cross-country round yesterday. It's just incredible. I think we will probably do something special to mark his career because yeah. actually it deserves a show on its own um i believe that that this is it at top level and you know william thank you for, for everything we we will do something to kind of look back on some of those great moments and, and reflect on it when we've got a little bit more time and and there's a bit more perspective around kind of actually just the the incredible longevity of his career you know he's overcome injury but actually he's he's had a career that has spanned a sport that has changed massively and he's had wins at the top level in the 90s i think he won burley on chucker back in 1994 or something and he won babington on chilly morning in 2015 that sport has changed massively you know he has won consistently at the very very top level he's dominated at the top level and and absolutely he has been one that has rewritten history um, and has made history and I don't think we'll see anybody quite like him. Um, Rosie, Badminton 2024, sum it up for us in three words for you. Gosh, three words. Um, dramatic, exhilarating and I want to say fun but that seems a bit naff. Um, it's been fun. It has it's been, been fun. great fun, but I don't yeah. know. Fun just seems a little bit flat, but it has been. I've absolutely loved every second of it. It has. I was going to say sunny. Oh yeah, because sunny is definitely a, a change <laughs> to twelve months ago, where we're all paddling around as a massive storm hit the prize giving, and everybody was very, very wet and soggy. <laughs> um, sunny, unexpected. Yeah, in lots of ways. That's a good you know, one. there's been there's been some real curveballs in there and success yeah a good weekend for the sport you know there's yeah. been drama but everybody is safe everybody is i, I was going to say everybody's happy i'm sure not everybody is happy <laughs> but you know reasonably happy um it has been a real honor to to be at badminton this week and i think you know moments like this we have to take a breath and go how fortunate are we to enjoy this sport in places like this and have weekends like this um we hope that you guys at home uh, or whether you've been here at badminton um have enjoyed every single step of it as well thank you for all of the support on the shows and, and listening to the podcast diaries with the eco bolts brilliant to have their support as well um and also just for following along on the journey it's been a, it's been a great one and uh, we'll look forward to seeing actually just what the badminton result throws up for the rest of the season because i think we're going to see plenty of impacts on those team spots for the olympic games and, and all sorts so look rosie it's been a pleasure and to the rest of the team as well who've had to dash off but thank you all echo ratings horse sales uh, a relatively new direction for the company it's been going on in the background for a little while now but time to tell you a little bit more about it uh first of all sam how does this work we cast the net over everything and firstly it's it's not just what have we got it's like what what are we even looking for like what attributes do we need so that's the first part of the process being like what should we be looking for call there and call you ring us there right like let's go to alphabeti days remember those days all right sam yeah i am looking for a horse it is for a young rider okay. who is 
very decent jockey. Cool. And well produced their own young horses, but actually they've got one year left in young riders. It's um their last chance to go and win a gold medal. And so we want something that has the potential to be on the individual podium and hopefully part of the team um, at the Young Rider European Championships. Okay, so the things I'm picking up on. First, we've got immediate goal. For the Young Rider European Championships, and and again, for the primary part of that goal to be, to be successful, to be on the podium, we can then look back again through those 15 championships and see what does it take to win? Where do those horses and where do the majority of those horses, where are they at nine months out from a cha- you know, at the end of the year before their championship year? You know, A, what does it take to win? What does it look like um, in terms of scores and targets and things like that? And then where should they be at? That's the first thing. What is what is achieving that goal actually look like? And where should the horse be at now? And on what metrics? So we'll look at phase influence because you've said to me, young rider, so they're still going to be at that three-star long level. There's still a big emphasis on dressage. It is the most influential phase. And then it's show jumping and then it's cross country. You don't need to buy a speed machine. We know what we need and what attributes we need. We're going to now whittle over 7,500 horses down to a draft. You're going to have your draft of the top 1% of horses in the world that are most suitable for your goal. But we're going to bring in other factors. Like you're in England. You might not want to go to Australia or America to try a horse. But what you said as well about being a good rider, you might just out of a preference thing, be like, look, talk to my trainer and okay, maybe we want them in the draft, but we're going to definitely place emphasis on horses that maybe aren't ridden by, you know, a six foot man because who's, who's won loads of championships because my daughter, you know, so there'd be, we've had those requests before finding the most suitable horses and then all our intelligence and and the numbers the metrics that we create like these ratings like elo that you hear us talking about all the time that actually correlate to future performance that's the key they actually matter we're using all those in the beginning now we've got what's optimal for you and some of your preferences that suit you and then our team go in and they'll they'll contact everyone um about these horses we're, we're getting videos from riders, getting as much information. This is all about the key here, folks, is you can make an informed decision. 